Well, all right, let's try this again. So it's apparently uh, volume decided to uh, just crap out on me on this last one here. This is the TS-158-CF. Uh, I honestly don't know if there's a standard titanium ver variant of this. This is a carbon fiber one, but uh, yeah, this guy is fairly small. As in, this is a three-finger knife for me. However, it's really, really comfortable. Um, you know, it hooks right around there. Doesn't really interfere, but I can, you know, have just a little bit of the uh, the pinky there. Doesn't poke or anything like that. Super great. Uh, I'm going to consider this a uh, finger choil, or uh, a sharpening choil, not a finger choil, because otherwise you really just don't have all that much room to work with there. But that's all right. This is a titanium frame lock. We got a uh, milled titanium pocket clip to go along with it. And this guy also has an M390 blade by, of course, Wong, which is why I'm going to consider this to be a sharpening choil because he usually makes fairly large finger choils for uh, those of us with uh, kind of <laughs> meteor digits. But uh, yeah, this guy works really darn well with a very subdued flipper tab here. It does stick out a little ways, but uh, very effective. And it also has some fullers there, so if you do want to be a little more gentlemanly with the open, then uh, you got that for your uh, kind of matchstick pull sort of things. It does have a, a little groove sort of thing, as you can see here, with holes on either side. That is fully replicated on the back side here. Uh, you probably won't be able to see uh, the other hole there uh, until we actually disassemble it, but it is. So yeah. I am really surprised that this knife is uh, as effective as it actually is with my larger hands. Like I said, this uh, isn't exactly a, um, a length juggernaut. Let's see. I can actually uh, take a look at uh, the blade length on this. Two point six seven five. So yeah, well under three inches. But I got a nice amount of belly there. A nice strong tip on this dude. If it is male, I don't know. <laughs> I don't speak any of them romantic languages with the uh, different sexes for, uh, you know, most of uh, the objects on Earth. But uh, yeah, so we have a couple of uh, barrel spacers going on on the back here. And you can't really get to the blade. You can possibly touch it right there at the very end, but you have to really try. And this is fairly narrow too, so don't really have too many issues kind of going on there the tip is quite buried in there so you can't really get to that unless i don't know yeah i can't seem to get to it <laughs> and the blade is quite far from both of those uh barrel spacers so we don't really have any problems with uh creating any blade wrap and dulling part of the edge there so hooray all right, so I got uh, the length on that. I'll go ahead and do this, and yeah, we're looking at like 4.35, generally right around that uh, area. So quite thin for a uh, pretty nice little titanium frame lock there. We do have an external uh, lock bar relief on there, which... You know, I can go either way. I do understand uh, with them using this uh, design here on the center that uh, doing it uh, internally would be certainly pretty darn difficult, if not just not work at all on there. So there is that. Uh, let's see. And the blade stock. We're looking like we're at 3.4. Yeah, that's where it was before it, uh, yeah. Yeah, a little little thinner than uh, some usual ones, but still 
quite a decent amount of stock there. You can really power through this. And uh, it really feels great if you want to uh, get that Gorilla Grip, uh, Hammer Grip sort of thing to uh, shove through cuts and whatnot. Works out super great. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I should also, while I'm uh, doing everything here, go ahead and uh, figure out the weights on this. 1.58, 1.59 ounces, 45 grams. So yeah, this is a fantastic summer choice for those of us who like to uh, wear some light fabric shorts and whatnot. And, uh, you know, don't wear a belt all the time. I generally do when I'm out and about, so that's not a huge concern of mine, but it's certainly important for a lot of people. And uh, this certainly meets a lot of those criteria. The, uh, the pocket clip, uh, you know, you have just a little tiny bit kind of sticking out there, but uh, it's fairly deep carry for a titanium milled clip at least, so that's nice. Centering on this guy, yeah, it's pretty darn good. Most of that would probably be uh, my doing, not that it wasn't centered when I got it, but uh, I have taken this thing apart a couple of times, so at that point it would be my fault if it wasn't. <laughs> so. so, yeah, speaking of... How about if we go ahead and uh, take a peek, see on the inside here. This guy in particular, I do actually have to take the clip off because one of the uh, the barrel space uh, screws will get in the way of that clip there. But we can see that, uh, yeah, it is inset into the titanium and it's not uh, a round circle. So very, very secure in there. T8 hardware all around, in case uh, you were curious and or weren't familiar with uh, most of uh, Tucson's construction. Alright, we coming in. Alright, yeah, so we got the uh, the smaller bearings that uh, Max Chachuk usually uses on a lot of his. And uh, works super darn well. We do have a uh, flat bearing races. Uh, you can see a little bit of a circle in there, but that's just kind of worn in and whatnot from uh, use and playing around and everything like that with it. This one does not have an over travel stop. Looks like it has uh, the little cutout there that it was possible, but the uh, the steel insert doesn't really have anything to do with that. It's not a huge deal, I don't really think, but uh, yeah, a little interesting that, uh, you know, they couldn't just have that little tab there. Oh well. Well, we do have a little bit of milling kind of going out uh, on the titanium side there, which is kind of neat because uh, we also have milling on the other side. And yeah, there's that other hole I was talking about that was kind of obscured by the clip. But uh, yeah, really, really simple construction, but uh, works really, really well. These uh, barrel spacers, the, uh, these guys actually do screw in from both sides. Uh, so it's a little bit different than the standard uh, post and screw or Chicago style screw that uh, they usually do uh, and that they use on the pivot here. So that is a little bit different than otherwise, but uh, yeah. Nice and flat there. Carbon fiber really doesn't need to be milled out because you're going to save, like, fractions of a gram, really. So, uh, you know, I can certainly understand that uh, you don't really need to worry about that. we got the internal blade pin there that uh, rolls around on both sides. So, yeah. Don't really have a D-shaped uh, screw unless I was absolutely... Stupid. Nope. I was right. <laughs> so yeah, we don't have a D-shaped pivot. Which, for these guys in particular, it would probably require uh, machining for just that kind of one part or something like that. So I can certainly see why they, they hadn't really bothered with that. But yeah, very, very simple construction, but uh, really feels rigid. I mean, you know, 
as titanium and carbon fiber usually does. But uh, I am very, very pleased with this knife. Uh, as far as kind of a uh, smaller knife that you can EDC, this is probably one of my favorites. And a lot of that does have to do with the fact that, uh, yeah, it is small, but uh, actually works quite well and comfortable for us with uh, those larger digits, as I was saying there. Maybe it's just a little loose. There we go. This guy is not incredibly drop shutty, and that has to do, uh, I think, uh, a little bit with... Uh, yeah, mostly it has to do with uh, those bearing races being flat instead of having that race already carved into them. So it will break in over time and whatnot. But uh, yeah, as it is out of the box, you know, you can still drop it closed as long as you actually get over that ramp. So yeah. Fantastic little guy. I think Wong did a, a really, really good job on this for just... The ergos on it are fantastic. I do like that, uh, you know, it is, you have a ton of belly on there. It is basically a reverse Danto kind of thing. Like, uh, you know, the Benchmade 940 kind of made popular and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, you do have that uh, reinforced tip. Works quite, quite well. we got a full flat grind on there. This isn't exactly the, uh, the absolute thinnest, sliciest behind the edge there. Their, their grinds had uh, improved a little bit since uh, they they had first designed this one. It still slices quite well, but, uh, you know, not quite like a laser beam like some of their newer ones are. But, yeah, that's uh, essentially what I got going on here with the TS-158. This is probably one of my more favorite uh, Tucson's that I have in my collection at the moment. Just because, you know... It is different because it's small. It's not, you know, enormous like, like say, this guy is like 3.9 inches or whatnot. Also a long design that, you know, just dwarfs it. But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, that's pretty much all I have to say about this guy, except for uh, if you do see it around for a decent price. I would highly suggest picking it up because uh, I really, really think it's worth it. Uh, oh, one last thing I should mention on this thing. It is uh, M390 steel. And for this one, it's pretty middle of the road as far as M390 goes from production companies. You know, Tucson, uh, I have kind of eh, bitched and moaned a little bit in the past about, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a gamble. So I will mention that with some of their higher end steels on these knives uh, moving forward. And this one... Sits right there in the middle of the pack. So you still have that uh, great advantage for having M390, which is very corrosion resistant. And it holds an edge pretty darn well. Um, you know, generally somewhere between like uh, five and 600 cuts on uh, my twisted sisal rope. That stuff here. Which is, uh, is pretty darn good. And, uh, you know, it's not, you know, incredibly hard. So you don't really have to worry so much about uh, chipping the edge on it. And... There was one other thing I wanted to say. Oh, yeah. And stropping it up really doesn't um, take much effort to uh, bring it back. So, yeah. It's, it's a pretty darn fantastic little guy. All right. So, uh, yep, I apologize for uh, the initial version of this being um, pretty terrible with the audio. But, you know, I'm certainly here and willing to redo it because, uh, you know, I love to talk about this guy anyway. <laughs> so, all right, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks for calling me out on the audio stuff. Servo Blabber Scrap Scrap.